Well, folks, check out what we got here. This is, as far as I know, 58 Apache. It's a pretty sweet rig. I dig it. She's, uh, the motor's a little tight. <clears throat> We're not sure what or why. I know some stuff is missing, but I'd like to dig into it and see what's what. Uh, but I don't have high hopes. I can't even turn the water pump and there's no belt on it. <laughs> and right now the truck is locked up. I can't, the dip, we can't even turn it. You could see that when we were loading it, we needed the, uh, we needed the Bobcat. But, hey, eh? isn't that thing nice? Golly. She needs a bit of work though. Don't know what the plan is with it as of yet, but there is definitely a rot issue. <laughs> Rest of it's pretty solid and nice. I love the color. We are missing a gate. It does have a lot of the typical rot, but it's not too bad. It's a lot better than my little Napco. We got similar down here, but these are good. Even these are not terrible. There's rod in there, but the inside, if you can see that, it's solid, nice, super nice. Anyways, I don't know if anything's happening with it at this time. I kind of got busy with a few builds going on right now, so. But, had to show it off. Pretty happy with this thing. Guess we'll see. I'm not sure. It's too nice of a truck. I think I want to leave it more. We'll try to keep it kind of stockish. Uh, the only thing I want to do is, uh, I want to change the rear end out and put something more modern in it so that, uh, I know these are going to be like four tens or something like that. So I like to put something in there. So it's more highway friendly when we get that far. I'm hoping we can get the motor loose and use it. But if not, we have the motor that we took out of our other truck that I can put in there. Should be a direct bolt in. And then I'm not sure. I know I can make the one brow, the inside. I don't know if they make a replacement that might be way easier than making, but that's kind of common. They always, the mice always get in there and make a mess and screw things up. But anyways, this one's going to sit on the sideline for now. And yeah, eventually we'll see it. We're going to try to revive this sucker a little later. Right. Well, we were dragging it to the shop. I just kept trying to pick up, drop it, you know, get the, see if I get the tires to turn. That one's starting to want to turn. Uh, it's still a little tight. I think, uh, like I say, I don't have any intention to run this particular diff because I just wanted to actually, well, my goal is to run and drive. But if we do do driving, I just don't like this diff. I'd like to get a more modern diff in it so we get some taller gears, like I've said. Anyways, 
This one is turning a little tight. I think some of the brake hardware fell apart inside. And the other side is not turning whatsoever. So what I'd like to do first is just see if I can get uh, the back wheels turning. So we can at least see if the motor turns over. Again, I don't have very high hopes for that whatsoever because, well, A, we're missing a few bits. And then when I, I can't turn this water pump, so I can't possibly see how the crank's gonna wanna turn. <laughs> I'm figuring I'm figuring she's buggered, but hey if it'll start I'm all for it, but It'd rock it around I guess I could put a bar on the front and just see but it'll just be easier to drop it Give her a push see if it wants to uh, if the motor turns over that'd be Easiest for me anyways So anyhow, let's pull the wheel off sledgehammer the drums. We'll do both. We'll sledgehammer both sides if there's junk loose in there, we'll take it apart and then uh, at least we'll be able to turn it around, put it in the shop and we'll have a better look at it. I would love to know if that thing actually uh, starts up. I don't know. I'm going to get one of those, see if I can see it move. <laughs> Maybe she's got no clutch. Huh? Let's just do something really simple. Let's put a bar on it and see what happens. Oh, is that all weird? I think it is. Nah, I'm just gonna throw it in the shop. Bugger on it. Well, it's in. Unfortunately, it's like, it's in gear. It pushes fine now, the wheels turn okay in the back, but there is no brakes, nothing. Which is telling me there is no clutch left in there. My little uh, marks down there are like, still 100% for the amount of turning the wheels did. And didn't matter what gear I did, anything. And I was watching it, the drive shaft was turning and stuff, so. I think the clutch is toast. That's okay. You know what? For the little bit of work, we got the motor that came out of this truck. So I think I'm just going to do the motor and transmission. Let's just slide all that in. And let's just focus on seeing if I can get this thing to run and drive. That's kind of the, the goal. I'm not too worried about brakes because I don't think I have a nice six bolt rear wheel to match the front or uh, like a six bolt differential. So we'll just kind of get it to run and drive. We'll loaf it around this way for now. We could always do the brakes in the front and ignore the back for the moment, but we'll have to see how bad the master cylinder is. Yeah. We're doing a lot of stuff. We're getting way ahead of ourselves here. Anywho, first things first, I guess. I mean, I'd like to tear the motor apart and see what's going on, but then a part of me doesn't really care because I have a running driving motor. So 
I think we're going to just go tear straight into an R&R. &R. We're going to just pull this sucker apart. Man, eh? Like, this is weird. But I'm guessing they stuck a 60s heater and stuff in it. Because judging by the controls, that's actually pretty ingenious. I bet you this thing's warm as heck in the winter. Oh, my poor door. Keep murdering that. <laughs> if you look in here, you can see, which is probably like early 60s heater controls sitting there. Which is, I don't know. This is probably some farmer rigged up thing, which is just ingenious. Anyhow, let's start tearing the motor out. What a mess in there. That said, when stuff like that falls out, I uh, pretty much know <laughs> the reasoning why she's not driving anymore. Judging by some of the pictures too, or by the looks of underneath, it looks like she's sitting in some water for a while. Though, and this one sounds a wee bit crunchy in there. Oh, it doesn't even have a drum on it. Look at that. The drum's sheared off. <laughs> Look at that. That's awesome. Well, that would explain why that one turns. Well, this one's okay. Hmm. I guess we have to address that. Other than that, though, she looks nice under. Well, we just fixed. There's some here, but it's not as bad. Well, till you dig in it, we don't know, but there's a little bit there, but look at the steps. Just nice. Typical back here. I don't know if it's been fixed because it's kind of <laughs> kind of crumbling a little bit. But the floors look all good. Don't have to deal with any of that. So I imagine the master's bunk will probably end up taking that off right away. Like even the inner, look at that stuff, eh? It's not terrible. Definitely not terrible. Here, see this side's not even as bad. Anywhere near as bad. A little bit here, I guess. I don't know. Pretty happy with that. Look at that. Tiny little bit starting up here. Hmm. All right. Well, judging by that, that's probably like a nail in the coffin. So we, uh, I don't know. I wasn't even going to try really that hard to get this motor running. So I think going on from here, we will disconnect the clutch. We will do the speedo cable. We will do our shift linkages. The drive shaft will, ah, uh, we'll take it off. Uh, so there's there, there, there. Two mounts in the front. These, we'll probably attack them from up top on the upper part of these. If you can see that or not. Right up here, we'll take those ones off. Fuel line, hoses, bing, motor is gonna come right out. And then from there, we will uh, scab whatever parts we can keep on there for spare, and then uh, we'll throw the rest of it out in the junk pile. I'll have to source some brakes. I actually think I have, now that I think about it. I have an axle around here from a truck like this that I did a clip in. So, I bought a 50s Chevy, but uh, I just looked it up, and the kingpins are different widths, and the spring perches are different widths, so. If the brake stuff is good, that's going to be a win because I think that other truck was a driver. So I could probably use the hardware or whatnot. I'm not sure how bad or if these kingpins have play in them yet. Mm, surprisingly, it doesn't really feel like obvious play anyways. No. How crazy is that? They're usually always broken. They're always worn out. They always kind of wobble around. I'm sure maybe once it starts driving it will, but for now, I think that's where we're going to leave it. So we'll uh, start tearing that thing out. And then uh, I will drag in the other motor. Because I do know I fired that one. I know it runs, so it should just bolt right in place. It's pretty much of the same era, I think. I don't know for sure. <laughs> but it's going to go in regardless. Anywho, let's get started.
So we pulled a few extra things off that I missed. We got the oil gauge, the throttle cable, which I guess I should just drag into the truck or something. So the oil gauges we'll just dump over here for now. I pulled the exhaust off, both mounts are done. We'll pull the intake, the carburetor, because we may as well keep that stuff for parts. Um, the water pump is like seized, so that thing's no good either. <clears throat> but when we get it out, we'll pull the water. I don't know if the fuel pump works, but we'll grab it, distributor, coil, the starter. I guess I'll grab this, who knows, but for something. Yeah, I'm just gonna grab the few parts there. And who knows? The rest of it seems like it's boat anchor material, so that's fine. Uh, anywho, I should be able to get it out with the hood up. I don't see why not. I could be totally wrong, but <laughs> we'll try. If I fail miserably, then I'll take the hood off. But anywho, I'm going to take the few last few bits off. We're going to hang a chain in here and out she comes. So it probably wasn't the best choice to leave that valence on and try to yank the motor and transmission. But, whatever. What's done is done. Um, I pulled the one motor out of the, well, out of the front there that I had. It's, it's the same but not the same. But I guess to be expected, right? That's like a 58 and this is like a 55, 6, I'm not sure what year. But they're still a boot stomp, so that's okay for the starter. And... Everything else seems the same other than the valve cover on that one. It's in the center. This one's in the front. This one's already got an alternator on it, so that's kind of a win. I mean, it's it's pretty hoagy and needs a little bit of adjustment, but it's on there. I guess people are going to razz me, and I probably should just do it. Uh, pressure wash this thing. Hose it off. <laughs> uh, what do we got? Our clutch looks the same, but this has got a heavier transmission on the back. I'm going to take for granted it's a Chevy, it's just going to work, but I don't know for sure. Uh, let's see if this one has, it's got a button on the side, so I think we're okay. I think we can throw this transmission in it and we should be golden. I got to finish pulling some stuff off of here, like good bits, like there's a good spring for something. Uh, other than that, transmission, starter, I guess because the motors are the same, I'll grab the distributor, the fuel pump. Coil. Yeah, we'll strip those things off. Then we'll hose this one down really quick. And then I think I'll put it in without the trans without the transmission on because that sucked. That heater box kind of made it a little miserable. Uh, we'll get the motor in place and then we'll put the transmission back on. Hey buddy, that was too long, eh? That took way too long. Well, we got it washed off as good as I can. I think I've been at that for a half hour with the hot wash and it's, uh, 
I think it's as good as I can get it. <laughs> it looks better than it did. Let's put it that way. I put some effort into it. Anywho, I'm going to let this all dry off. Uh, we're going to go for a cruise. And then uh, I guess tonight when I get back, we'll start disassembling some of this stuff. Because mostly this. I need to switch the transmission out and put that one on. Because that's how that truck's set up for, and that's what we're going to put back into it. Hopefully it all cooperates all right. <laughs> I don't know. I think so. Should be fine. We'll just take off the stuff properly like I was supposed to the first time. That's too lazy and just torched everything. <laughs> Anywho, when that dries out and my shoes, they're a little wet, we'll uh, be back and uh, switch these around. Alrighty, folks, we got most of this hooked up. Got a hose, rad. We still have some wiring issues we gotta deal with. because so it looks like some stuff got melted. I did hook it up. There's nothing powering up the coil. So I'm gonna have to pull it, uh, like the truck out, and have a look at that. But I think for now, just to prove that the motor does work, and so I know I didn't do this for nothing, I'm gonna jim, just jimmy rig. We're gonna just start it from out here. I have the battery hooked up, but I'm just gonna feed power to the coil. We're just gonna hot jump it. Should run minty, that's the plan, I'm hoping. Should be. <laughs> and then, um, then I think I wanna address the brakes, like at least get me some front brakes. We'll deal with that. I'll probably try to rip a drum off the back and uh, that can fix this side, but we'll see how bad stuff is, if we can rebuild things or not. Like I said, I do believe I have an axle outside if I need parts, but uh, I don't plan to use the diff, so the drums in my head are the same, front to back. So we could always steal one from the back. Uh, the first thing we gotta do is, we'll do that. First thing we gotta do is actually see if this runs. To which, I did have it before I pulled it out, so it's only been sitting outside for a couple weeks, so uh, we'll fill the carb up and put a jumper from the coil over to the battery here and use our little pry bar to start and it should just fire up, at least. That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> All right, we'll give her a shot, but we'll fill the bowl up too for the heck of it. 
Leaking out the bottom says it's good. That is our coil. I really need to find higher quality jumper cables. These are all way too small. Um, should be a neutral, I guess. We'd find out right away here. Stick my bar in there. We just gotta pull her down. Whoops. Whoops. All right, you don't like that, eh? Let's not short that out on my starter button. It's not as happy as I thought this would be. You can do this. It never gets old. I think my... Gotta run a little bit longer than that. Typical story, eh? My batteries go dead. <laughs> uh, well, we know it runs, right? It didn't even make noise. It was good. We are good to go. We'll, uh, let's just blindly jump straight into tearing the wheels off and dealing with the brakes. That'll be the plan. now nothing looks good in there <laughs> springs you could probably get these relined but they're probably cheap to buy i'm not 100 percent know where i'm going with this truck yet so kind of on the fence here this side's about the same shape or worse because it looks like it's been underwater um I do know I have an axle outside, so I'm probably going to go grab it. I'll bring it in and we'll have a look-see at it to see if it's, uh, uh, if the parts are better inside. Hmm. And maybe I have a drum. <laughs> that one's not much better though. It's pretty uh, well used. I don't think it would pass inspection, that one. Well, hopefully there's some steering bits on it. Like everything is tight in here, but... I'm just missing all the boots. They're all kind of gone. I guess you can get some if I needed to. Because I bet you a little bit of grease, everything will just come back to life here pretty good. But anyways, let's grab that other axle and we'll just see how, if it's good to this stuff anyways.
Well, the drums are not perfect. They'll need a scrubbing. A little bit of rust. The drums actually feel good. The pads, well, it's not ideal, like I said, but they're holding together really good and stuff. So we're, for what we're doing, we'll just try to fix stuff up quickly, slam some brakes in it. So we got some front brakes. I'm not too worried about the back. So these are okay. And then these wheel cylinders, I'm hoping they'll just clean up and we can kind of just make it work. The only problem we'll have is that master cylinder. I thought I had one in the shed, but it's completely different. Must be for a sedan or something like that. Uh, well, I don't even think a sedan, but it's got the holes are different. So I don't know if it's older or what the deal is, which is probably what it is. Anyways, I'm pretty impressed for the most part, other than the drums were, the brakes were a little stuck to it. All I do is try to get the pry bar behind. Usually if you can get this stuff to snap away, what usually hangs up is a worn drum hooks around the corner. So usually if you just pry the pry bar and work your way around, if you can get it at the top, that'd be ideal. These older backing plates can take a bit of uh, a bit of force on them before they get all wonky and screwed up. But I'm gonna pull all this stuff off and then that's about all I'm using out of this front. I mean, these fittings and stuff are still good in here, but I think they're good on the truck as well. I think the only dumb part is like if I'd have to take them apart because they don't have a boot. I don't know. I think you need, for some reason, you need boots on them for safety, even though it's a high grease area. All right. Uh, I'm going to get this off. I'm going to get the wheel cylinders off and then we'll take them to the bench and see if, uh, if they're any good inside. Judging by the grease, like this is like a more modern grease. I don't think this stuff is like terribly old. <laughs> I don't know. Let's tear it apart and find out. Well, that cleaned up like really nice. So that one's good. The cups, they're all like really good shape. I'm not concerned about them whatsoever. Uh, shouldn't probably do what I'm doing. Should probably have lube them up a little bit, but even everything I took apart, even these sleeves were clean. So 
that just tells me this uh that other axle was probably on some form of a driving truck at some point these are a little cruddy but they'll be okay anyways the wheels on they look kind of junky on the outside but they're actually all spanky new in the inside so you should put brake fluid on there before you put them together <laughs> Shouldn't do as I do. With that said, we got that together. We can actually, ideally, you could buy new boots. This one's got a slight little tear in it, but eh. it is what it is. And for what we're doing right now, it's just to see if it'll drive around and stop. I like to always check these things to make sure they, they're clean. That way, you know, uh, if you're trying to bleed your brakes, uh, the bleeders actually work. And we clean all the junk out of them. Alright, I'm going to brush this off. That's actually not too bad. So essentially, screw these back together and uh, we got two reconditioned wheel cylinders now. So. So that's okay. We're gonna clean up the other brake pads a little bit, nothing major. I think I'm just going to, uh, what do you call it? Just wire brush them off really quick. And then we're just gonna smash everything together on that truck. And then I'll pull the master cylinder off on that truck and see if hopefully it's the same as these, but I don't know if you've seen how rusty that thing is. I kind of question how much of in the water that truck's been sitting. I don't know for sure <laughs> if they're going to be any dang good. Anyways, let's put our front brakes together first and then we'll see where we get with the bottom. Well, the master, the inside actually cleaned up super nice. The other parts, they're okay-ish. I'm not sure though. I think something is kind of half wrecked here. For some reason, I always remember this and this. Well, maybe this is fine. They kind of go like that because this has got them little holes in it. Not exactly sure what it does, but it kind of goes in this orientation. Anywho, I do have, I looked on the shelf and I do have a random I believe this is for a master cylinder. Only problem is I don't know for what. I don't think it'll say on here. Oh, it says a wheel cylinder kit. Oh, then that means this is for a Dodge. Yep. Dang it. Alrighty. Well, I think it with a rebuild it could work, but nobody stocks that out here anymore. Like there's not a local shop on earth in our side of the world here that would actually have something like this in stock for something this old bomber gotta remember to order a couple of these rebuilds just to have hanging around actually i'm gonna check a random kit that i got see if it has the little bits i'll check that right away here oh look at that oh ooh. oh that might still be for a wheel cylinder or would this be for a master? No. I don't think I have anything for master cylinders in here. Ugh. I might have to check with a buddy of mine. Maybe he's got... 
because it's supposed to snap onto here. I think these are all just cups. This kit is super cool, but it saved me every now and then. <laughs> but it still doesn't have what I need. I do have a few more cups somewhere. I got to go look for it. I don't know if it'll have the master cylinder one though. Unfortunately, I cannot find a one and eighth inch Buddy had something but it's way too small and this thing's like just swelled to the nines I tried checking a couple master cylinders. I had and this Chevy ones like the right size But when I tried taking the rings like the uh, o-rings off, they're just kind of cracking and stuff. So That's junk, but at least I know Whatever it is like early 60s pickup has the same bore size and everything so I should be able to get a rebuild for this and use it on the stock one that's in there. So uh, I'm going to see if I can hopefully somebody locally can get it in tomorrow. I guess until then what I'm going to do is uh, just clean up, just wire wheel these really quick. And uh, kind of just slam the brakes together. Although I don't feel like doing it right now. Hey, Pablo's kind of over this. You want to go in? So I think we're going to call her a night. We spent enough farting around trying to find these things and, and it's not working in my favor. So tomorrow is a new day. We will uh, tackle this again tomorrow. Hopefully I can find one. These I found some eighth inch cups, one and one eighth this way. So we're good that you, that way we just have to, uh, we just have to find the one that, uh, fits on here this one anyhow we'll do that tomorrow and then we'll put the front end together tomorrow we'll check out the tank I don't think it's gonna be any good and then we'll be able to roll it ahead once we do that with the if we can get the master done we can at least roll the thing ahead we can check out what's going on with the wiring why nothing's working inside under the hood there and uh, hopefully Pabs and I will be one step closer to taking a ride. That sound like a plan, buddy? You don't care. You just want to go in the house, huh? You've had enough for tonight. <laughs> Esther says I have to blow you off tonight. She says you're dirty. I don't know. All right. Want to go in? Let's call it a night.
all good news. I was doing some searching last night and found a one in one in one and one eighth inch master rebuild that looked the same. Uh, randomly was just looking up dormant numbers on Amazon, to which then I cross reference it to our Napa, which gets me one four six is the part number, to which I believe is the right one that'll work in this master in this pickup truck kind of thing. So you can kind of see how swollen up things have gotten. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to get that back in there. We're going to put this thing luber up. We are going to throw it back into the truck and hook up the brakes. Actually, everything's hooked up. We just got to do that. Bleed the front. I'm going to do nothing with the back. I might just vice grip the line. Uh, like all the lines honestly need to be changed and there should be new hardware and all kinds of stuff put in. But because I don't know what I'm doing with this truck yet, I just wanted to drive around. That is our goal right now, just to fart around the yard. Um, yeah, that's all it is. Anyways, let's start smashing parts back in and uh, get these brakes bled. Never did show that, eh? How's that for a scary wheel adapter? And it's heavy. It goes six to five. But if you look at a couple of the studs, <laughs> they're very questionable. Alrighty. So we got brakes. Front brakes. We got them done and bled. As you can see, this is not an ideal situation, but it will slow us down. So it's better than no brakes. <laughs> Uh, our master's actually rebuilt, so that's cool. Um, just got to put a lock pin on there. We, uh, we did the rear brake delete, so that's good. Good, good. So I guess now we're going to actually set the truck down on the ground. We're going to roll it ahead, and we're going to assess how bad the fuel tank is, whether we're going to run it. Probably not and figure out why our wiring isn't working and nothing under the hood has any power. Probably a fuse, I don't know. Anywho, we'll uh, start investigating anyways. Well, I'm not sure how well you folks can see, but judging by this, there is a lot of cobwebs and rust in there. <laughs> Let's get to the bottom of the tank. More cobwebs. Oh, just a nice big layer of rust. It's actually not terrible though, but I'm not going to put fuel in there. Let's avoid that one. Anywho, I uh, pulled all the good bits off. So this is my bounty that I got from our old motor. We got a carburetor, starter, distributor, fuel pump, and a coil. Some of these are sort of specific to this thing, and then the other one's like, eh. The coil's like just good to have sitting on the wall for something. So we put a new fuel filter in. I guess for now my plan is I'm going to go, we're going to run the old boat tank like I normally do, I guess. We'll uh, jimmy rig that up somewhere. Uh... Next thing we got to do though is figure out why we don't have any power in here. So 
A, I do have to hook this up, and I did have this hooked up. This was on the battery side. This, you would think, is the coil, but hey, what do I know? Because we got there, and then we got two wires over here, and one's like burnt pretty bad. So I'm thinking that's the ignition one. <laughs> I can't remember if this one, if something went into there. Um, and then we got to figure out our alternator, but that's not too important right now. Uh, but do -do. So on the inside, we just got to see what's going on. But with all of our treasures, we got a pretty swank seat cover. Too bad it doesn't wasn't gray. Be pretty killer. Oh, the smell in here though. Whoa! Like you can see how bad this thing is. Of rotten. Look at that thing, eh? Dina. Which isn't bad. They make repair. They make replacement panels for up here. So I'm not. <laughs> I'm not overly concerned. Look at that, eh? That part doesn't scare me because it needs a windshield anyway. So, but it definitely smells like a chicken coop. It's kind of a weird, weird to describe. Chicken coop is definitely the right word for it, though. Like an old chicken coop. Like there's no more chickens. <laughs> uh, anyway, we gotta backtrack and figure out what's going on here. Because when I do the key on, some stuff has power, some doesn't. I'm gonna go through the fuse box. Um, I'm gonna clean out the inside a little bit here because, yeah, the chickeny smell doesn't strike as something I really want to lay down in. I'm gonna guess it's uh, more so probably mouse. Mousy, maybe I'm smelling, but it doesn't have that mousy smell. It is mousy, but it's not mousy. Ooh, what do we got in here? Oh, that's like the one I would use on my 38 or 37 or whatever my truck is. Spare lens, heater control, a thermostat, Ooh, points. Uh, another heater control. Ballast resistor. Lots of good bits. We'll just park those back for now. They don't intrigue me. Is that lock? Oh man, it's awesome. Alrighty folks, I am gonna go start digging and see if I can find uh, why we got no power in here. I think we got this thing all charged up. Should be good to go. Uh, I am going to plumb this carburetor full of some fuel. Until it starts leaking out of somewhere here. Give her a little shot of gas. I think everything should be good. I'm gonna gonna fire it up. Ooh, I think I got too much in there now. Oh well, I'm gonna fire it up and see if it'll start pulling some fuel. That is the plan.
<laughs> Told you it runs. I think I got too much fuel in there though. We are hooked up. That fuel pump is not looking successful. <laughs> We have our jerry can sitting right here and she's supposed to be feeding fuel but I have a funny feeling this fuel pump's no good. Well, we're in luck though. But do I want to change it? I'm not feeling it. I think I'm just going to hook up my click clack pump for now. Well, I think sure it runs a long time though, eh? Oh, spoke too soon. Oh, it's still going though. <laughs> oh, hey, had good oil pressure, everything. All right, well, I'm gonna jimmy rig my click clack pump. Oh. I hope that's not leaking. Anyways, like I said, I'm gonna jimmy rig my clickety clack pump and we should actually be good to go for a rip. Other than a little dark, and I think we're gonna have to go for a run tomorrow, honestly. Let her pump prime a little bit. Should be good. Give her a little pump. say that's a success I guess we'll uh, have to see tomorrow here see what tomorrow brings you ready to go bud hop in I got you this next one's gonna be a trouble for you Okay, that's nice. <laughs> Have a seat, bud.
Well, there we have it. The motor smokes a little bit at idle, but eh, the motors are easy to change if it comes down to it. I'm pretty happy with it though. I guess um, future installments, I think what we're gonna do is probably visit and fix a little bit of the rust maybe. The big thing I really wanna fix though is just this head brow, this part. And like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually order the two pieces so we have them. So we'll kind of walk you folks through how to do that when the time comes. It's just way too, it's way too breezy. <laughs> we'll address that. That's not a problem. But other than that, like overall, this truck is nice. Definitely worthy of something. I just don't know what, what the plan is. I'm leaning towards just stock, changing the diff, kind of going that route, fix the few little bits that need to be, but kind of just leave the truck in the patina it is. I'm toying with the idea of maybe leaving the stock front end, but uh, getting a drop axle to lower the truck so we can do that and do the back and then just keep the six banger in it. Maybe put a small block, I don't know. I kind of like the six, it runs nice. It, Everything's good with it. I don't have a problem. Just might need a better motor. This one runs, but like I say, when she's idling, there's a little bit of chooching happen. So not a big deal. Easy to address. Um, yeah, I don't know. What do you folks want to see? Do you want to see like a stock front end with a drop axle? And then we kind of lower the back, kind of do that deal. I'm not sure. Anyways, uh, until... We play with it again. I want to thank you folks for watching. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.